everyone, it's Pam from Glam Junk Journals, and today I would like to show you guys how to print on fabric. Currently, I am creating an all fabric journal, so I thought I'd bring you guys along and show you how I print on fabric and also decorate one of my pages. So this is one of the pages that's going to be in my journal. This is all fabric, and so I'll put that off to the side. I originally learned about this printing on fabric from a Pinterest post from the decorated house. And this is just gonna be my take on it. And at first I thought, oh man, I, there is no way I am putting fabric in my printer. It's just not gonna work, it's gonna jam, it's gonna ruin my printer, you know, all this kind of stuff. But I'm telling you guys, this works really good. Not to say that, you know, there is the off chance that something might mess up on your computer, but I've done this like 10 or 15 times and every time it works out great. So with that being said, let me show you what you're gonna need for this. These are Avery shipping labels and this is a full sheet label. I apologize for the lighting in here. You never know what you're gonna get with my lighting if it's reflecting, I apologize for that. Ah. Okay, anyways, Avery shipping labels. And this is a full sheet label. So it's eight and a half by 11. And the number is 15265. So that is the identification code for these labels. And let me show you what they look like. I'll move this out of the way. This is one of the sheet labels. And what it is, is, you know, you just peel off the back when um, you want to put this on your package or whatever. So what you need is one eight and a half by 11 sheet of the labels and a piece of fabric. Now my suggestion, when I say fabric, I'm talking um, a bed sheet. <laughs> So I'm not suggesting that you put like upholstery fabric or anything like that in your printer. That's not what I'm talking about here. But I do want the image to be on a piece of fabric. So this is a tea stained bed sheet. And I did cut it to the same dimensions, eight and a half by 11. Now the thing with doing this is you want this is the only kind of persnickety part that you got to pay attention to is you want to get it almost exactly or as much as you can the same size as your label sheet because when you run it through your printer you don't want little frayed edges hanging off anything that could jam in the printer so what you're going to do is you're going to take off the back and on these labels, they have these little fold parts so you can easily pull off the backing here. So we're gonna take this off. Get that out of the way. So here's your sticky side. And we're gonna put this down as exact as you can. And you can move it around a little bit. So I apologize if I have to move into the camera here a little bit. You'll see my hair that hasn't been combed today. <laughs> uh, well, that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to try and get it as exact as I can to, you know, the edges and move it all the way around. And then you do want to flatten it out as best as you can. And let me get my little wallpaper spreader doodad here and I'm going to get all of the creases and see there's a little crease right there I'm just going to pull that out because that's what would mess up your print so we're going to get all those little creases out here all along the edge and this label these um, Avery labels are really sticky so this works really good so as you can see this is really flat see there's nothing going on here I'm gonna flip it over to the other side 
and obviously I didn't cut it exact, so I would suggest cutting any of the extra off of the edge because the, that could potentially clog or, you know, jam in your computer printer. All right, so we're gonna move that out of the way. Just go around the edges, so yeah. Obviously, I thought I was cutting pretty close to eight and a half and 11, but maybe not. All right, get that going here. Oh, and there's some more on that edge right there. And then these little uh, frayed parts, try to get those off if you can. Then all you have to do is figure out what you want to print. What you want to print. I am going to do an image, but you could do a pattern. That would be cool. You know, anything really. All right. So that looks really good, right? So on my particular printer, I have to make sure that this side, the side I want to print on is facing up. And I don't know if you guys are like me, but I mess that up all the time where I put it the other side and then it prints on the wrong side. Oh, geez. All right, so I'm gonna put this in my printer real quick. So hang with me, stay right there. Just gonna line it up in my printer. Okay, now I am going to print the image here real quick. And I would move the camera around, but it would be all jiggly and stuff. So I'm just gonna print and it'll take two seconds. So hold, hang with me guys. I have it all set up and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, it's printing. Okay, and then when we get it back, it's printing right now, you can hear it. It's all fancy, hopefully nothing will jam up here. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the thing with, uh, you know, you're doing a YouTube and like I said, 15 times I've done this and it's never jammed and then it jams. Ah, so keep your fingers crossed. No, it's sounding good, you guys. All I got to say is just make sure the edges are secured down. Oh, this is so exciting. Here it comes. All right. Yay. Check it out, check it out. Ta-da, look at that, yay! So, what you wanna do is you're just gonna peel off the edge. You'll, and this is pretty easy, you'll be able to find an edge that comes up pretty good on your fabric here. And the cool thing is, you guys, is this stuff is so sticky, you can use it more than once. So, here she goes. Check it out. Woohoo! Wee! So, this is still really sticky. So, if you think ahead, you know, print a couple things. I'm going to put that off to the side because we're not going to print any more today. And here's my lady. Isn't she pretty? Yay! 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 So, she is going to go on my page, right? Now, she's a five by seven. You can print the whole thing, the eight and a half by 11 if you want, but I am going to cut her down just so that she fits on here and I don't have a lot of the extra, you know, sheet going around here. So, me being challenged in cutting here, I'm gonna do, as straight as I can on the lines here. And in actuality, I, it's not really gonna matter because I usually put some sort of, you know, border on the edges or uh, fray up the edges so it doesn't matter that much if it's exactly a straight line. Which I guess it just depends on what image you're printing, right? Well, let's see. I have to have it a certain way to cut. <laughs> So I think I've told you guys this in my other uh, 
tutorials, not all of them, but I've mentioned it, that I'm left-handed, but if you notice, I'm cutting with my right hand. Well, that's because when I was growing up, they didn't have left-handed scissors because back in the day, it wasn't a good thing to be left-handed. You should be right-handed, which, you know, don't get me started on that. But I had to learn to cut right-handed, so I'm kind of ambidextrous. This little side note, like you guys really even care about that. But, so, <laughs> I'm going to fray the edges a little bit on this pretty lady. So that's the reason where, you know, why it didn't really even matter if it was exactly straight. So we're gonna fray her up. Now I have not tried printing on any other types of fabrics. I would, I don't know, silks may not absorb the ink. Let me know if you guys have. Um, so I would stick to some sort of cotton, uh, you know, and something that will lie really flat when you uh, stick it onto your shipping label. Okay, so there she is. That's going to be the main uh, focal point. But what I like to do, and I've uh, mentioned this before, is I like to give her dimension. Because if you put her down, which is fine, this is just personal preference, she's going to be really flat. And I like to add a little bit of, um, you know, dimension underneath so it comes off the page a little bit. So that's where your batting comes in. And here are a couple pieces of batting. You can get this at, you know, Hobby Lobby or Joann's. Um, and so I am going to just cut a piece that is about the size of the image. Let's see, what's the easiest way to do this? This way or this way? I don't know. Okay, I'll do it this way. There we go. I love doing this. It's so fun. And obviously, you know, save your scraps because this will be good for another one. A smaller image, perhaps. And then I cut the batting a little bit smaller than the actual... Um, you know, image that I want to put it under just so that you don't have the batting sticking out of the sides. I don't like that. I like it to um, create depth, but I don't like this batting sticking out, you know, of the sides so you can see it. All right, so that, that looks good. It doesn't matter if that's straight or not. I'm just going to uh, tack this down with some Fabri-Tac. And I got a new bottle of Fabri-Tac. I love when they're new because it's almost like it's, um, you know, it's not as dried out and it, it comes out and it doesn't get all gooey on the top. So there it is. Okay, so there she is. She's got some dimension. Whoops, she's got a red fuzz on her nose. <laughs> Don't want that. Okay, so we're building layers again, right? So see how she comes off the page? I just think that looks cool. So what that leads me to, what I think is, oh, I need something still sticking out from behind. So I am going to grab in this big old pile of stuff that I have on my desk here. I've got laces and all this stuff right off the side of the camera. I think tool looks really good. So we're gonna put some tool underneath her. Get that extra batting out of there. I don't need that anymore. Another thing that I like to do under these particular images is use cheesecloth. So we might use some of that today also. And I got this. I think I've told you guys this. Walmart. It's the bomb. And you get a huge roll for like four bucks. And it lasts for a long time. So let me see. I think I do have some cheesecloth over here. And this has been tea dyed here. So I'm going to, you know how it gets all crunched up. 
get this bigger hair. And I think that would look really pretty underneath her too. So we are going to just get this opened up maybe. Maybe not, right? You know how cheesecloth does that? Bleh. All right, so there's a little bit. Let's see if there's some more, if I can get anything going on this piece. This looks kind of ratty, I don't know. Even too ratty to use in a junk journal. Hmm, maybe not, I don't know. Yeah, I don't like that one. Okay, get rid of that one. <laughs> that one's giving me problems. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can get this going a little bit. So this is creating with me <laughs> as you go, right? So that looks like as big as I'm gonna be able to get this without, you know, wrecking it too much. So where's my scissors? What do I do with them? I'm gonna take some strips and just put this along the edges. Now before, I have done like a big piece of cheesecloth and just laid it all across the back. But since my cheesecloth is getting a little slim, I'm just going to do some on the edges here. And I don't even know if this side's going to work. Jeez. Maybe this cheesecloth is really old. Mm -hmm. I don't know, guys. I'd have to cut some off on this side and use it on the other side. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We can always make it work though, right? All right, so we're laying down here. Laying down a little bit of border of some cheesecloth, right? I think I'm gonna have to go get some more of this stuff because this is all I have. Might have to dye some more later. And when I do my dyeing, like of paper and fabric and you know whatever else I got going here, I, I kind of spend a whole afternoon doing that. Do you guys do that? All right, so let's tack this down. We're tacking down. So I have to plan an afternoon to do all my dyeing. Avocado dyeing, using, um, what else? Beets, I've used, I use beets a lot. Tea staining, coffee, watercolor, got a lot. <laughs> and since I'm kind of messy, I do have to lay all sorts of stuff down in my kitchen. You know, because I, uh, I kind of tend to make a mess. All right. So we don't even know how this looks on the other side. <laughs> uh, it may look yucky. All right. But we're going to add some tool anyways. So I'm going to cut some tool up here. I'm just gonna get that going too on the edges here. And I like to scrunch my tool so it's not flat. And that's what I mean by, um, you know, just kinda, I don't know what the other word is behind, besides scrunch, just so it doesn't, besides scrunch is just so it doesn't lay flat. And you can always move this stuff around cause it's just, it's just hanging out, right? And you can be pretty generous with the tool here because I like when it's scrunched up, you can see it better. If you lay it flat, it's just a hint of color, which is just, there again, personal preference. All right, so we're creating a border with some tool. Oh, burlap would also be really cool. I've done that before too. Burlap looks really neat too, depending on, you know, what uh, what the look for look the what the look you're going for is. There's a mouthful. All right, so 
you're like, hmm, I don't know about that, Pam. It looks kind of weird. Well, it does. From the back, it does. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to tack this down and try not to get all sorts of glue globs here. And you can always manipulate it when you uh, flip the image over. Oh, another thing you could do, and I've done this before also, is you could do fabric as your, um, you know, to stick out of the sides instead of tool. That's fun. Or ribbon or lace. Oh. All right. So I don't know. See, now my hands are getting glue on them, so the stuff is sticking to my hands. All right. I'm going to get my little wipe here. Ugh. All right. Ready for the reveal? Uh, okay. Ooh. <laughs> Look. Look how cool that is. And see, so you can, um, you know, move around your, uh, whatever you got going under here, your cheesecloth or whatever. But doesn't that look cool? And she's going to go right on there. <gasps> now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause the camera for a second. And I'm going to sew around the edges. You don't have to do any sewing. If you don't have a sewing machine, that's not a problem. Um, I just like to uh, do that just because, uh, number one, I have a sewing machine. And I like the way it finishes the edges. So hold on and I'll be right back. Okay, check it out. Oh, look how pretty she looks. Yay! Isn't that going to be cool on that page? Wow. 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 Now, I am going to position her on here. And I'm not sure if I want, you know, any of this background uh, fabric to show. I think I do a little bit because, you know, it's got the same um, uh, taupey beige background as in the image. So I'm going to move her slightly off center so that you can see some of the edge here and a little bit on the top. So we're going to glue her down. And oh, you think we're finished yet? Mm -mm. No siree. See, there's the back. It looks gnarly, but who cares? It's all secured down, right? <laughs> and it looks fabulous from the top. So I am doing a generous amount of Fabri-Tac on here. All right, that looks cool. Very cool. Move my page back here. And I'm going to move her not quite in the center, but like I said, a little off center so that you can see this over here because I like that. All right, and smoosh her down. And she's not laying flat on the page because I've already decorated the other side. And um, I'm going to keep that a surprise because <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm just excited. I'm just excited. Now, see, here's a little bit of extra... I don't know, way too, a little too much extra, maybe, of the, um, cheesecloth, but I'm not sure yet. Okay, so, there you go. You can see the tool, you can see the cheesecloth, and then we're going to layer some more. Yay! So, what do I have in my never-ending supply of stuff? Let's oh man oh this looks so good it looks great already and it could be finished but you know me more is more so I've brought um some lace some oh that doily's too big rats I wanted to use that oh well use it on another page and here is a little cut out there that might look really pretty on there although I'm covering that up <laughs> I don't know I think, well, hold on just a second. Now what happens, see, because I was looking at this and thinking, oh, that's a little too big, but 
what happens if you kind of smush it? I'm all about the smushing, right? I think that looks really good. So we're going to do it. But before we do that, I like to add a little bit of border on some of the frame here. So maybe, oh yeah, we're just going to add some of this pearl trim along the side. This pearl and lace trim, isn't that pretty? Oh man, look at how good that looks. Oh wow, love that. Make sure I get all the glue globs off of there. And that is going to be pretty secure on there. Cut this off right at the bottom. So thank you for crafting with me today. I love doing this kind of stuff. Love it. What a wonderful way to spend the day is with my YouTube friends. Okay, so there's that side. Now see, that leads me to think that I need something on this side. Okay, what else do we have? Let's see. Oh, that's pretty. That's some little, this is from um, a wedding veil. And I uh, avocado stained it and, ooh, that looks really good. And then I just cut off all the appliques. Okay. Let's see. All right. Let's just go with it. And maybe have it a little bit, you know, not right on the border, but around the edge. That looks good. All right, we're going to do it. Don't think too much. Don't think too much. Put that down. Kind of because it follows the uh, shape of the frame. This image... Um, I think I didn't. I did not mention I got this off of uh, the Graphics Fairy, and I absolutely love their images. This is um, one of the Victorian images they have on their premium website. I just think it's just fabulous. Now, I don't know, you guys. Do you think that's too big? I'm not sure. I don't know. Or do you like it better without? Mm. let's see what else we have oh oh look at that oh, this is um this is a little shoe clip you clip it on the um edge of your shoe to give your shoe some bling I don't know I'm kind of liking that too but that could go up there oh, oh wait wait a second Okay, I think that's it. All right, so we're going to glue this baby down. So we're going to smush it. So I'm going to get a pretty generous amount of the Fabri-Tac here. Flip that over. And just kind of make it a little smaller. So it looks kind of like a fan. Looks kind of like a fan. Which I think looks great. I'm gonna secure that down. Now that will that will be secure once it's uh, once the glue is dried. All right, so that looks really good. I'm gonna put some more on this right here on the corner. Get those little stringies off of the fabric tag. Ugh. Okay, let's see. Am I liking that? Am I liking that? I think so. Oh man. All right. And then that is going to be secured right there. Now, this I am going to use. E6000, and I don't have it right out on my desk right now. So, with that being said, 
Ta-da! Don't you love that? And it's, it's uh, dimensional. That is the coolest. Yay! So I highly encourage you guys to print on fabric. It just gives, it gives you so many more options. The sky's the limit. I'm telling you guys, once you start doing it, you're going to love it. So anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And if you would like and subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. And stay tuned and I will be back soon with my next video. So have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye!